This video will be going over how to use Spice's Euler Angles to Direction Cosine Matrix function to better understand the relationship between Euler Angles and reference frames in 3D. And we will again be using a Molniya orbit, as is shown on the left here, to visualize the application of Euler Angles, which in this case is how the Keplerian orbital elements are defined by using a 313 Euler Angle sequence. And if you haven't seen it already, I have the Space Engineering Podcast on this channel, and it's also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, all of which I'll have links in the description to. And now onto this video, let's go straight into the software. The goal of this script is to calculate the direction cosine matrix associated with a 313 Euler angle sequence that describes the orientation of this orbit here on the right with respect to the inertial frame. And I'm using this orbit example to help visualize what is going on, but it's not absolutely necessary to know the orbital mechanics behind it. Just know that this orbit's reference frame, also called the perifocal frame, is an inertial frame defined by the x, y, and z axes here. So the x-axis points from the center to the periapsis point, which is a point that is closest to the center in the orbit. The z-axis points towards the angular momentum of the orbit, which is defined as a cross product of the position and velocity at any point in the orbit. And then the y-axis completes the right-handed system. And I have a video that goes much further in depth on these Keplerian orbital elements, which I'll have linked in the description too. So we can describe the orbit's reference frame with three angles, which is the right ascension, inclination, and argument of periapsis, which are the three angles of the 313 Euler angle sequence of how the Keplerian orbital elements are defined. So here in the script, these are defined right here. So these are the three elements for Amelnia orbit, where the right ascension is 30 degrees, inclination 63.4, and argument of periapsis is 270. And then these are all converted into radians using the ratio of pi over 180. And then we can simply call, once we have all these defined, we can just call the spice oil to matrix. So it's Euler 2 matrix function, where the first three arguments are the three angles of the sequence pass in order. So this is the third angle. The third angle, second angle, first angle, and then you define which axes you want for the Euler angle sequence, which in this case is a 313. So the third rotation, second rotation, and first rotation. And they have it kind of in that backwards order. So three, two, one, three, two, one. And then just from calling this, it returns you the rotation matrix that is associated with this Euler angle sequence, the 313 Euler angle sequence defined by these three angles. So then in the script, um, we just print it out, print out the transpose because the transpose is going to be really important to understanding what's going on with this matrix and then plot it. So then if we just run this function, because it's important to see in 3D what is going on. So if we run this function, we have the Euler 2 matrix. So that printed out. So th this is the matrix that is returned by Spice here. And this is its transpose. So first we'll just focus on the matrix that is returned by Spice, which is here. So, and that matrix is the purple one here, OIL2M here. And then just ignore the transpose for now. So we'll just talk about that OIL2M. So in this case, we are plotting this reference frame by columns. So the first column is going to be the x-axis of that reference frame. The second column is the y-axis and the third column is the z-axis. And we can see that here where we have the x-axis of this OIL2M frame, which is defined as 0 0.2 in the x direction. So that, that kind of makes sense if we look at it from this perspective. It's only a little bit in the x direction. And then 0 0.866 in the y direction. So it's pretty far in the y direction. So that kind of makes sense. And then 0 0.4 in the z direction, which also makes sense because it's slanted upward with respect to the inertial frame. And the same thing with the y axis of this oil 2 m reference frame. We have negative value for the x. So if we go to the y axis rotate it here you can see why this y-axis has a negative value for the x and then we have a 0 0.5 for the y which we can see makes sense because it goes about halfway to in the y-axis direction and then a negative value for the z again we can see why because it's pointed downward here and then the same thing for the z-axis and now this may seem kind of random and arbitrary but now i want to put these side by side so we can see that here's the purple reference frame and here's the orbit reference frame. And again, these don't look very correlated, 
But watch what happens when we now kind of rotate how we're looking at this plot as if the inertial reference frame is this oil to M reference frame. So if you kind of reorient yourself to the, the X, Y, and Z axes are now this X here of the oil to M, the Y here of the oil to M, and the Z. So kind of reorient yourself to have that be your base frame. Now, if you take a look at that and then take a look at the white frame, which is the inertial frame, this white frame is actually in the same orientation as this orbit reference frame is. When you're looking at it from the perspective of this rotated frame, the oil to M frame. So when you're looking at it with that as your base frame, now in the inertial frame looks like it looks like for the orbit, which is pretty interesting. And this is going to be very important when we actually look at the rows and columns of the rotation matrix. So we'll start there by the fact that if we get this rotation matrix from SPICE, that's being defined by this Euler angle sequence, we get this rotation matrix. And if we plot the columns of that, we can see them here. And then if we kind of just take a look at, twist our heads a little bit and think of that oil to M matrix as a reference at the base reference frame, then the inertial frame looks like this over here. And now this is why we take the transpose because if we then take the transpose of this matrix, which is this here, which is this blue reference frame here. And we take a look at, I'm gonna to try to line up the inertial reference frame here with the same as the plot. And that is exactly what the orbit reference frame with the perifocal frame looks like, the transpose of it with respect to the inertial frame. And now this is a difference between an active rotation and a passive rotation. Now let's take a look at the documentation that SPICE has for this function. And this is a C documentation, but it's the exact same thing because what we're using in Python is just a wrapper for these functions. So we have this oil 2 m function that takes in three angles, which are doubles, and then three integers, which define the axes, just like we saw, and then returns a three by three matrix, and then abstract constructed rotation matrix from a set of Euler angles. But what's important here is to understand that these this is a passive rotation. So they are describing a passive rotation with this. So we have here that there's a set of three angles and three coordinate axis numbers. And note that these coordinate frames transformations rotate vectors by a negative angle. And that is really important because that is the difference between an active and a passive. So an active would be the positive rotation. And then the passive is a negative, which they are using here. And then if we keep scrolling down, we see that this is how they define the rotation matrix. So we have three rotation matrices in a row where here is the first rotation, second rotation, and third rotation. So this resulting matrix R may be thought of as a coordinate transformation, not an active transformation, but a coordinate transformation. So applying it to a vector yields a vector's coordinates in the rotated system. It doesn't rotate the vector. It gives you the coordinates in the rotated system. And that's, that is a definition of a passive rotation. So now that we know that we're getting back the passive rotation from the spice function, and we also know that we're actually interested in the active rotation because the active rotations are how that this reference frame is defined. And again, I, I go over that in another video. But all you have to do to then find the active rotation is to take the transpose of the matrix that they gave us, which is why I took the transpose in this case and plotted it out. So now that we have the transpose, we can see that the transpose is the blue frame here. And then if we just go, oops, if we just go over its coordinates, we can see that, so okay, so we have the blue reference frame and then the X component is about 0 0.22, uh, which makes sense from that perspective. The Y component is about negative 0 0.4, which also makes sense. And then the Z component is about negative 0 0.8, which makes sense as it's pointing downward. And the same thing for all three axes. And then this is actually, so when we do it like this, this is that reference frame. So this blue frame is pointing in the exact same direction as is the reference frame defining this orbit. So that is the differences between the active and passive rotations and how you can convert from one to the other. 
Now, I know this is very confusing, and I still very much get confused by these active and passive rotations. So I'm going to post everything that I have here in this video. So this script and this plotting function, I will post onto GitHub. So you can start getting a feel and kind of playing around with the plot to understand mentally what's going on. And then you can also change these values and then change maybe a 3, 2, 1 Euler angle sequence and then kind of see how everything differs and then be able to play with it in 3D. So I'm going to post this on GitHub now with this video. And then the next video, I'll be going step by step and everything that's going on in this plot reference frame. Since as you see, the only comment I have is here because this is kind of confusing. But besides that, I don't have any comments. So in the next video, I'll be going line by line what is going on in this plotting function so you can get a better feel of what's going on and how to use it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and share with anyone that you think would also find this useful to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and to stay up to date with all the videos coming out in the future. Again, I have the Space Engineering Podcast on this channel and I'll have all the links in the description. And let me know if you have any questions about this video and about rotations like active and passive rotations or if you find anything confusing still because I know these are very confusing, the difference between the two and when to use one versus another. I still very much get confused by these and have to play around with the 3D plots in order to kind of wrap my head around them. So yeah, definitely let me know. And then understand that all of this is leading up to spacecraft attitude control, which is why I'm making all these videos because all of this applies to say a simulation like this, when you want to detumble a spacecraft from some sort of random rotation and line it up with the LVLH frame so you're looking down at Earth. So that's kind of an application of where all of this is going. So again, the next video will be going over that reference frame plotting function that I have on GitHub, quaternions, and then getting into spacecraft attitude control. That's it for this video. Again, let me know any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.